Welcome to John Recap, where every second counts. The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is now, today. I'm gonna recap the second part of the 10th season of the 2018 American Horror Series, called The Walking Dead. Subscribe to the channel to stay updated on all the latest. The previous seasons of the series are available in a pinned comment below the video. Let's kick off this party without wasting any more time. Carol wakes up in her room and gets ready for the day. She grabs her gear, including her gun, and heads out. Daryl spots her leaving and asks where she's off to. Carol says she's going on another sweep to find Negan, and Daryl offers to join. Reluctantly, she agrees. As they travel, they talk about the chance of Negan joining the Whisperers. Carol stops near the Whisperer border and scopes the area with binoculars. Daryl wants to know the real reason for their visit, and Carol admits she's there to locate and take down Alpha's horde. Over in Alexandria, Dante checks on Cheryl at the infirmary and jokes about her wanting more time with him. Siddick arrives, and Dante says more folks are sick, but he's not too worried. Dante suggests Siddick take a day off with Coco and makes an inappropriate joke about Rosita. Siddick reminds him about boundaries. In the woods, Carol tells Daryl she's been tracking walker movements along the border and wants to observe the clearing for whisperer activity. Daryl warns about starting a war, but Carol plans to report to the Alexandria Council first. She apologizes for lying earlier, explaining she didn't want him to worry after confronting Alpha. Daryl agrees to stick around and help track. Meanwhile, Beta and the Whisperers lead blindfolded Negan through the woods. Negan jokes and expresses interest in joining them. Beta silences him with a threat. At Hilltop, Eugene improves the radio setup with satellite parts and talks to Rosita. The radio malfunctions, so they decide to talk later. In the woods, Daryl and Carol pass time tossing acorns. Carol gives Daryl a special one for good luck. They talk about Hilltop, and Daryl assures Carol there's nothing between him and Connie. They spot walkers and suspect a Whisperer among them. In the Whisperer's camp, Alpha and Beta argue about what to do with Negan. Alpha wants to test him, while Beta wants to kill him. Beta submits to Alpha, and Negan watches with a smile. Later, Negan jokes about Beta's relationship with Alpha. In Alexandria, Siddick finds Rosita sick and takes her to the infirmary despite her objections. Eugene tries to contact someone over the radio at Hilltop. Later, Carol and Daryl discuss how to handle Alpha's horde. Daryl questions Carol about her gun, but she denies having it. In the woods, Beta makes Negan prove his worth with tasks. Back in Alexandria, Siddick gets upset with Dante for not handling the sickness properly. At night, Carol and Daryl observe the herd near the border. In the camp, Beta doesn't let Negan eat with them. Negan shares food with another whisperer instead. Eugene gets a surprising response over the radio. In the woods, Daryl and Carol attract the walker's attention accidentally. Meanwhile, Eugene talks to the woman about their pasts instead of sharing community info. He's from Dallas, Texas, and she's from Strasburg, Pennsylvania. They bond over visiting the same ice cream shop. In the woods, Daryl camouflages himself with walker blood. Back at the infirmary, Siddick apologizes to Dante and comforts Cheryl. He dozes off with Coco and has a confusing dream. Beta and Negan walk among their herd. Beta kills a whisperer for sharing food with Negan. In the woods, Carol holds a whisperer hostage after being spotted. Daryl questions her motives, but Carol denies planning it. They head back to Alexandria. Back at Hilltop, the woman worries they might be a threat to each other, but Eugene trusts her and shares his full name. They agree to continue talking secretly. Eugene accepts her conditions and they sign off. The next morning, Beta returns to camp and tells Alpha that Negan died due to weakness. Surprisingly, a blood-covered Negan arrives, asking for a skin suit. He introduces himself to Alpha and pledges his loyalty. Alpha approves of him. Siddick wakes up with horrifying flashbacks of Alpha killing his friends at the barn and hears the phrase open your eyes. He tends to Cheryl's fever and takes care of other sick residents. Siddick hallucinates seeing Alpha outside the window. At night, he reads medical books until falling asleep and has a disturbing dream. The next day, Daryl signals Lydia to get out of her cell while Carol brings in the captured whisper. Carol questions Lydia about him and his knowledge of Alpha's horde. Gabrielle scolds Carol for risking the community's safety and demands to be present during the interrogation. At home, Daryl cuddles with his dog and thinks about the plan. Lydia tells Carol the man won't betray Alpha easily, but if they show him Alexandria's strength, the idea could spread. Siddick and Dante tend to the whisperer's wounds. The whisperer taunts Siddick, who leaves the room nervously. Meanwhile, Aaron and Gamma meet at a border on a bridge. She notices supplies in his bag and he offers her some bread, but she declines. Gamma sees Gracie's drawing and learns Aaron has a daughter. She's surprised, saying kids hold you back. Aaron asks about siblings, and Gamma lies about being an only child. In Alexandria, Carol offers the whisperer food and tries to talk, but he refuses. He spits the food on her face emotionally. In the infirmary, Siddick tends to Rosita and they reflect on being parents. Carol interrogates the whisperer. And when he threatens her, she fights back with Daryl's support. The Whisperer says they're lying to themselves, and he won't betray Alpha because she loves her people, even sacrificing her own daughter. Carol rushes out of the cell, and Daryl stops her, asking not to involve Lydia who's been through enough. 
Carol insists it's the only way. Siddick checks on Cheryl and they talk about staying strong. Aaron tries to connect with Gamma at the bridge, but she leaves, repeating the Whisperer motto. In the cell, the Whisperer gets worse and dies from the poison. Carol and Lydia arrive, but Daryl shields them. Siddick finds Hemlock in the medical bag and accuses Dante of killing the Whisperer, but Dante denies it. Gamma cries to herself and kills a walker, only to find Alpha waiting. Alpha asks about Aaron, and Gamma shares what she knows. Alpha whips Gamma's arm to toughen her up and warns her about Aaron's lies. In the cell, Daryl prevents the Whisperer from reanimating, and Gabriel offers to help hide the body. Carol asks Lydia for help outside Alexandria. Siddick finds Cheryl's empty room and sees Dante digging a grave. He experiences flashbacks and jumps into the pond. Reseda rescues him. Shortly after, Reseda confronts Siddick about his struggles with haunting memories of their friend's death. He admits feeling like he failed Enid and misses her. Reseda urges him to fight for her, Coco, and everyone else. While discussing the sickness, Siddick realizes the water is the culprit. He finds a tampered lever at the water pumps and vents his frustration. That night, Gamma meets Aaron and briefly holds him at knife point until Carol and Lydia intervene. Gamma runs away, and Lydia hits Carol before crossing the border herself. Nearby, Gamma breaks down. Back in Alexandria, Dante tries to comfort Siddick but triggers his traumatic memories. Siddick realizes Dante was a whisperer involved in the killings and a fight ensues. Dante chokes Siddick to death, expressing remorse for his actions. In a flashback, Alpha tells Dante to forget about his past and the Whisperers. She tasks him with spying on Alexandria, promising him a special place among the Whisperers once their enemies are gone. Dante follows her orders, pretends to seek help from walkers, and infiltrates a group of survivors. He spends the next four months leaving secret intel for Alpha and sabotaging Alexandria. In the present, Dante contemplates his actions while sitting with Siddick's corpse. He's about to end Siddick's reanimation when Reseda enters with Coco. Dante lies about his whereabouts but is caught red-handed when Siddick starts turning. He attacks Reseda, who defends herself and Coco by stabbing Dante and subduing him. The next day, Gamma meets Aaron on the bridge and asks about her nephew Adam, who was saved by a family. In exchange for information, Aaron demands the truth and Gamma reveals her real name, Mary. In Alexandria, Daryl punches Dante during questioning in the infirmary. Gabriel asks why he killed Siddick, and Dante claims it was necessary since Siddick knew his identity. He admits his mission was to create paranoia and push them into bad decisions. Reseda kicks him in the back, and Aaron arrives. Aaron shares that he's been in contact with a whisperer who knows Alpha's horde's location. Daryl orders a group from Hilltop to join them. Carol agrees to help find Lydia. Daryl questions if she's really focused on Lydia. On the way to Oceanside, Scott spots recent prints. Nishan warns about Whisperer's scouts and asks the group to stay alert. Luke shares a favorite song with Judith and writes it down. Luke convinces Michon to check out a nearby library for more books. Inside, Judith finds a Russian-English dictionary for Luke to help Eugene with satellite parts. Luke heads to the music section. Michon gets a radio call from Magna about Luke being attacked by walkers. A man saves Luke and runs away. The group arrives, and Luke tells them about the savior. Michon shares Siddick's death news and urges them to hurry. In Alexandria, Gabriel gives a moving eulogy at Siddick's funeral. Reseda grieves alone. Ezekiel talks with Carol, offering help to find Alpha's horde, but she declines. Ezekiel keeps his cancer hidden and wishes her luck in the mission. Later, Reseda confronts walkers, releasing her anger with brass knuckles. Eugene arrives to help and consoles her. He's relocating but bids her goodbye. Meanwhile, Gabriel watches Dante's interview where he claims to have a son. Reseda arrives and shares her fear of leaving Coco as an orphan. Gabriel focuses on dealing with Dante, which upsets Reseda. She questions their strength as Dante suggested. At home, Aaron plays a game with Gracie, and she wins. She asks for a story about Aaron's past love in California. Gracie wonders about the villagers' fate, but Aaron doesn't have the answer. In Oceanside, Michonne insists on a new vetting system for newcomers. The man who saved Luke is brought in, claiming he just wants to reunite with his family. The residents accuse him of theft, and Michonne demands answers. Walkers suddenly attack, and the group prepares to defend their community. In Alexandria, Gabriel confronts Dante in the cell about his son's claim. Gabriel expresses sorrow over Siddick's death and Coco growing up without a father. Despite Dante's question about second chances, Gabriel stabs him to death in a fit of rage. Reseda sees Gabriel covered in blood as he leaves the cell with Coco. At Oceanside, Judith injures the man trying to escape. Michon praises her. In Alexandria, Reseda sees Gabriel burning Dante's body and they reconcile. Elsewhere, Daryl meets up with Carol, Aaron, Magna, Jerry, Connie, and Kelly for their mission. Daryl stops Carol from stepping on a trap, reminding her of their future. They hug and cross the border together. In Oceanside, the man wakes up and tries to stop Judith from reading a book he brought for his daughter. Michon questions him, and he claims he only sought supplies and wants to go back home. He saved Luke out of mercy, recalling a phrase from Rick and Siddick. He reveals his family lives on a fortified island and proposes a deal. 
Vishan plans to help him in exchange for weapons to destroy Alpha's horde. Judith understands and they hug. The group arrives at the horde's location but finds it empty. Daryl decides to search for Lydia instead. They're being watched from the bushes. At Oceanside, Michonne gives Virgil his backpack and the weapons. She explains her mission and leaves with Virgil on a boat. In the woods, Carol spots Alpha and chases her into a dark building. The group is separated by walkers. Daryl kills the walkers, and they end up trapped in a cave surrounded by the horde with no way out. Daryl, Carol, Aaron, Jerry, Connie, Kelly, and Magna recover from the fall in the cave, stuck with a massive horde. Alpha, holding a torch, looks down at them, and Carol angrily yells at her. Alpha orders the Whisperers to keep them trapped and leaves, putting on her mask. Magna tries to climb a wall but fails due to its height. Daryl suggests finding another way out. Using rocks, they manage to move forward. A walker grabs Kelly's foot, and Jerry cuts off its arm to free her. While they navigate the cave, Kelly mentions the limited food. Jerry believes there must be an exit since walkers got inside. Connie checks on Carol's well-being, and Daryl realizes she's claustrophobic. Magna confronts Carol about pursuing Alpha, leading to their current situation. Daryl urges them to focus on finding a way out without quarreling. In the Whisperer's camp, Alpha tells Beta and Gamma that their enemy crossed the border and is heading to the National Park where the Horde. Beta thinks they underestimated the enemy, so Alpha assigns more guards and sends Gamma to deliver a message to their spy in Alexandria, who they think is already dead. Negan observes quietly. In the cave, the survivors rest and talk. Daryl tells Carol he's tired of her recklessness and wants her to stop seeking revenge. Carol admits she wants Alpha to suffer, but Daryl reminds her they're fighting for their future, not vengeance. Carol promises not to deceive him again. Meanwhile, Magna investigates the stone maze and is attacked by a whisperer. They fight and defeat several whisperers, deciding to follow the ones who escaped to find the exit. The next day, Negan talks to Alpha about a possible traitor, suggesting it could be Gamma. Alpha threatens him with a knife and warns against sowing paranoia. She tosses him away and leaves. In the cave, Connie comforts Carol, and the group navigates through narrow tunnels. Carol deals with claustrophobic attacks but manages to push through. Walkers appear, urging them to move faster. Jerry gets stuck, but with Daryl's advice, he removes his armor and makes it through safely. Magna almost falls into a massive hole but is saved by Daryl's quick thinking using a walker's arm to light the way, revealing part of the horde. At the Whisperer's camp, Alpha asks Beta about Gamma's location and suspects her of being the traitor. Beta sends scouts to assist her. Alpha orders Beta to find Gamma and bring her back alive to execute her in front of the pack. In the cave, the group finds a blockade and a possible exit at an old mine station. Kelly discovers dynamite, and Jerry cautions her to handle it carefully. Magna opens up to Aaron about her feelings regarding Yumiko. In the Whisperer's camp, Alpha takes Negan deep into the forest and surprises him by undressing. She commends his ability to detect the spy and kisses him, leaving him intrigued about what's to come. In the cave, the group continues digging for an escape route when Daryl notices Carol and a dynamite stick missing. He finds her planning to destroy the horde with the dynamite. Daryl convinces her to stop, but the dynamite explodes underneath them. The cave collapses, and Jerry holds a beam to let others escape. Kelly and Aaron make it out, killing some whisperers. Connie and Magna go back for Daryl and Carol. They help them escape but face more approaching whisperers. Connie and Magna stay back to protect Jerry while he escapes. The dynamite explodes, trapping Connie and Magna. Daryl tries to clear debris while Kelly is in pain. Aaron realizes it may take weeks to reach Connie and Magna. Kelly suggests leaving to avoid attracting more walkers and whisperers. Carol blames herself. But Daryl insists they should head home and inform others about the horde while he searches for another cave entrance. Beta walks through the forest and enters a moldy RV where two whisperers reveal a hidden tunnel entrance. He jumps down, lights a lantern, and ventures deeper into the cave. In Alexandria, Reseda wakes up from a nightmare and gets a call on the radio. Cam arrives at the gates and is surrounded by guards. She removes her mask and explains the group is trapped in a cave surrounded by Alpha's horde, possibly still alive and in need of help. Gabriel questions her, but Gamma insists on assisting, revealing her nephew is at Hilltop. Reseda knocks her out and orders her imprisonment. Daryl observes a whisperer near another cave entrance, ready to attack, but retreats when Alpha appears, leading the horde. Back in Alexandria, Mary wakes up in a cell. Gabriel and Reseda question her involvement with Dante's actions. Mary tearfully confesses she killed her sister for Alpha, gaining their trust. Meanwhile, Alpha and her whisperers lead walkers through a river. A whisperer is hit by a knife and devoured after screaming in pain. Daryl emerges and takes out the remaining whisperers, confronting Alpha. They engage in a brutal fight, and Alpha injures Daryl's face, impairing his vision. Daryl injures Alpha's shoulder and demands to know where Magna and Connie are. Walkers nearby get attracted, and Daryl deals with them despite his cloudy vision. Alpha stabs Daryl's leg, and they flee. In the meeting hall, Mary shares information about the cave and its entrances. She reveals Alpha's forces are concentrated around the cave, leaving the borders weak. Gabriel proposes sending two rescue teams, and Reseda questions Mary's credibility. 
Gabrielle believes she's telling the truth and suggests aggressive measures to extract information from captured whispers if needed. Elsewhere, a weakened Alpha finds Daryl in an abandoned gas station, struggling with the knife in his leg. She searches for him in the workshop but gets tired and attracts walkers by banging her shotgun. In Alexandria, Reseda and Gabrielle prepare for an outing. Reseda insists on joining despite Gabrielle's concerns about her safety and emotions regarding Coco and Siddick. On the streets, Judith talks with Mary, learning about her past and how Alpha brainwashed her. Judith suggests a different outcome if Mary had encountered Rick and Michonne first. At the gas station, Daryl fights three walkers, injuring himself while removing the knife from his leg. Later that day, Laura receives an echo post about a hundred walker herd approaching. She tries to confirm the message but gets no response. Gabriel explains the Whisperer's tactic of silencing traitor information. The scout team is drafted, and Gabriel changes the plan, leaving Reseda and Laura with a small crew while he leads the recon mission. Reseda expresses her fears for Coco's future if they die and they share a goodbye kiss. At night, Beta emerges from Cheryl's grave with his blades, silently moving through the community. He slaughters survivors in their homes and waits for them to turn. On the road, Gabriel's team finds Echo Post soldiers murdered, realizing the Whisperers manipulated the information to weaken Alexandria's defense. Back in Alexandria, the killed residents turn into walkers, wandering the streets. As Reseda and the soldiers fight the undead, Beta enters the basement and ignores Mary's claims about Alpha Lai. He orders her to come with him, promising a painless death. Laura appears and threatens Beta with an axe, allowing Mary to seek help with Judith. Beta overpowers Laura, killing her. Beta investigates the Grimes residence and tries to enter the children's room but gets shot by Judith. Mary protects the children, and Beta attacks her, only to be stopped when she mentions Alpha's desire to keep her alive. Beta takes Mary back to camp but is ambushed by Alexandrians, forcing him to flee. Mary convinces Gabrielle she didn't betray them. Back at the gas station, Alpha and Daryl are injured and bleeding. Alpha takes off her mask and gives a speech about strength and darkness. Daryl tells her she drove Lydia away because she didn't love her. Alpha gets angry, faints, and briefly sees Lydia. Alpha tries to convince Lydia to kill her but she refuses, blaming her for not letting her live a normal life. The next morning, Alpha wakes up and sees a message carved with her knife. In Alexandria, Scott reports Beta's infiltration and Aaron tells them not everyone escaped the cave. Reseda leaves Coco with Gabriel and joins a group heading to Hilltop for a checkup. Mary also joins the group to see her nephew. In the forest, Lydia tends to Daryl's wounds and admits she couldn't kill Alpha. At the gas station, Alpha is surrounded by whisperers, declaring war on the communities. In the woods, Beta and the whisperers harvest sap from trees. Alpha orders Negan to whip her arm, and she does the same to him. They continue marching with the horde, chanting we are the end of the world and we take them all. Negan now wears a whisperer mask. At Hilltop, Eugene searches for a music record while Stephanie talks about comets. Eugene can't find the record, so Stephanie suggests he sing it himself. They discuss the number of comets they've seen, and Eugene reveals that his group is in Virginia. He proposes a meeting, and Stephanie agrees, but she asks him not to inform his group. Eugene promises to keep it quiet. Outside, Alden and Earl work on Hilltop's defenses when they see a group of Alexandrians approaching, including Mary, whom they don't recognize. Aaron explains that Mary used to be a whisperer but defected to see her nephew, Adam. Earl doesn't trust her and only wants to let them see Alex. Ezekiel finds Carol at Daryl's former camp and offers comfort, though she denies needing it. At Hilltop, Kelly wants to join Luke's search party to rescue her sister, but Luke worries about her injured ankle. Yumiko asks about Magna's last words, but Kelly is focused on rescuing their friends. Annoyed, Kelly questions Yumiko's intentions for joining them if she believes Magna and Connie are dead. Daryl and Lydia arrive, revealing Alpha's approach. Looking for Eugene, Reseda heads to the attic and hears Stephanie trying to contact him on the radio. Curious, she answers the call, but Eugene rushes to stop her from responding. Angry at Reseda for breaking his promise, Eugene tells her to leave. In the woods, Negan proposes to Alpha that they get Alexandria and Hilltop to surrender, adding their populations to the Whisperer's ranks. Alpha asks for more details. At Hilltop, Yumiko instructs others to radio them if they spot the Whisperers approaching. They discuss their options. Lydia suggests running, but Earl doubts the Whisperers would bypass them. Jerry wants to fight, while Diane agrees with Lydia, thinking they can rebuild elsewhere. Earl is unsure, saying they won't find a place like Hilltop. Yumiko points out they are outnumbered. Earl insists on fighting for a place that matters, even if they die. Aaron mentions the children at Hilltop. Daryl suggests getting the kids out first and regrouping at Oceanside. The kids get in the wagon, and Judith wants to fight, but Daryl shuts her down. He sees Carol and Ezekiel arrive, but doesn't greet them. They don't get far before they find Felix and Penny dead, blocking the roads, making retreat impossible. They head back to Hilltop, and Daryl fills everyone in. Luke suggests calling Alexandria for help, but Diane thinks it's too late. Earl believes Hilltop is ready and tries to rally everyone for the fight. Later, Ezekiel's getting ready in his armor when Carol knocks and comes in. 
She notices the lumps on his neck, and Ezekiel tries to downplay it, but Carol doesn't buy it. She tells him not to try and fool her since she's good at spotting BS. Ezekiel admits he wanted to tell her about his condition, and suddenly, she kisses him. Downstairs, Mary sees Adam and tries to talk to him, but Alden stops her. Despite her pleas and Aaron's attempts to mediate, Alden won't budge on keeping them apart. After being intimate, Ezekiel jokes about being remembered for something and notes Carol's lost sense of humor. She says she left it in the kingdom before it burned down, and Ezekiel admits he left his pride there too. He playfully asks if they'd have ended up together if they didn't think they were going to die tonight, and Carol responds with a humorous, wait, we're gonna die tonight. They share a laugh. Outside the hilltop, Reseda finds Eugene calibrating the electric vents. She tells him that she talked to Gabriel and Coco is okay. Eugene wonders if she told him about the horde, but she didn't. Reseda thought Eugene would be working on the radio, but he admits there have been no new messages. Reseda suggests Eugene likes the girl on the radio, and he fears she won't talk to him again after the earlier mishap. Reseda assures him the girl likes him and even invites him to kiss her. He hesitates, finding it strange to want to kiss someone he's never met. Reseda finds it endearing and encourages him to try winning Stephanie back. Back at the hilltop, Lydia tearfully looks at the engraving Henry made for her when Carol joins her. After lighting a cigarette, Carol says Lydia should hate her. But Lydia finds it hard because Carol already hates herself so much. Carol swears to kill Alpha, but Lydia knows it won't save them. Carol insists it will feel good and asks if Lydia will hate her then. Lydia coldly says she won't be thinking about Carol at all. Carol chuckles, thanking her for being honest. Lydia notes that people don't know how to do that anymore, so they stay away from both of them. Carol sadly says she had a life, and Lydia simply replies, I know. Outside, Luke, Kelly, and Yumiko are working on defenses. Yumiko apologizes to Kelly, who forgives her with a hug, saying they'll rescue Connie and Magna because assholes get shit done. Suddenly, rats scatter from the bushes, signaling the approaching horde. Yumiko alerts everyone to prepare. As they gear up, Eugene tries to get Stephanie to respond over the radio by singing an Iron Maiden song. Stephanie joins in, and they chat. Stephanie disappeared briefly when she heard another person respond, but Eugene says it was his fault. Eugene describes Reseda as his BFF and hopes Stephanie can meet her someday. They set up a meeting in Charleston, West Virginia. Reseda interrupts to take Eugene to battle, and he confidently follows, stating he has a date. Downstairs, Ezekiel is putting on his armor when Daryl comes over. Daryl notices the lumps on Ezekiel's neck and asks if he's okay. Ezekiel replies, Nah, I got cancer, but adds, but it's alright, you know what I'm saying. Daryl expresses his sympathy, and admits that while they didn't always get along, he and the others are still glad to have him. Ezekiel appreciates the kind words. They make a plan for the kid's safety in case one of them falls in battle. Ezekiel leaves, and Daryl finds Judith sitting on the sofa. Judith insists she can fight, but Daryl wonders why she's not with the other kids. Judith says she's not scared, but she might be for RJ, her mom, and Daryl. Daryl reassures her that it's okay to be scared when fighting for what matters. Judith reveals she fixed Daryl's vest and they share a hug before promising to stick together. Carol joins Daryl and asks him not to hate her. Daryl assures her he won't, and they part ways. Daryl grabs his morning star and heads to battle. As everyone gathers on the front lines, Kelly confirms the horde's proximity by feeling the ground. The walkers emerge from the bushes and approach the hilltop. The electric fence briefly stops them, but they break through and advance to the second defense line. Aaron commands the survivors to split ranks. Shields reinforce the barbed wire, Melee fighters take on the walkers, and archers stay at the back, shooting arrows. Behind the herd, Beta orders the whisperers to launch sap using makeshift catapults, drenching defenders and walls. Fire arrows follow, igniting one unfortunate resident. Negan questions Alpha's plan, but she assures him they'll join the horde. The defenders retreat towards the hilltop, but the whisperers' fire arrows trap them as the community catches fire. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to stay updated with all the latest content.